Hello, how's everyone doing today? It's been great. It's been quite an interesting day, hasn't it? Well, what I'm going to tell you right now is something you've probably already guessed, but I'm just going to say it anyway. It's tough being a doctor. And I don't mean the long hours working in the wards or the clinics, or the stress of perhaps having to deal with life and death situations on an almost regular basis. But rather, we've been given very big shoes to fill. And this is what society and the media thinks of us. <laughs> Moody, cynical, sociopath who always manages to step in at the very last minute and cures the sickest patients from the rarest of diseases. The hero who saves the day. And always looking cool and sexy while doing it. Not easy indeed. I have a deep interest in healthcare. It's been my entire career these last 10 years. And I would say that probably all of you here have an interest in health as well. You've had interactions with doctors and nurses, you've been for clinic appointments, you've accompanied family members for their visits. And you know that we aren't like these people over here. Well, at least most of us, I would say there are a couple of people that come close. Health is something that we often assume is there and we take for granted until something happens, and then it can cause our entire lives to come to a halt. For just a few days, if it's a bad flu, or for the rest of our lives, if it's something more serious like diabetes, heart disease, or even cancer. And after all these years practicing medicine and talking with patients, I've come to realize that the hero in healthcare is not the doctor. When I first entered medical school, right here at NUS some 15 years ago, there was no such thing as a smartphone. Mobile phones were big, clunky, and dumb. And in the year where I started my housemanship, which is the time where, very exciting time, where as a junior doctor, you are let loose into the wards for the first time with a license to kill patients. Sorry, I mean, save patients. That was always the intention. And during my housemanship year, the world's first iPhone was launched, 2007. How many of you watched Steve Jobs' keynote back then, the very first iPhone? Okay, maybe a bit too old for you guys. But anyway, uh, it was a very good presentation, but at that time, many people thought it was going to be a flop. It was way more expensive than the Nokias, the Blackberries, and the Motorola's. Plus, it didn't even have one of those tiny, plasticky keyboards, which was really the very in thing back then. Little did I know that this device would profoundly change my life, and it would change the way I viewed healthcare forever. And let me tell you why. Today, hands down, the biggest problem we're facing in health is the rising epidemic of chronic diseases. It's spiraling out of control, and yet it remains largely invisible. For example, did you know that there are 415 million people living with diabetes right here, right now, today? And According to recent reports, Singapore has the second highest proportion of people with diabetes among all developed nations. One in three of us here will have diabetes by the time we are 69. That's almost 200 of us. And it really struck me when the professor did the study said that it's no longer a question of if I will get diabetes, but rather when will I get diabetes. So what does this mean for all of us over here? Well, it means that I hope you've all gotten your health insurance because you're going to be needing a lot of it in the near future. And for the patient living with diabetes, diabetes is a lonely disease. It's there with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it doesn't go away. This blue circle here is the international symbol of solidarity for diabetes. And you can see that a typical patient spends less than 1% of their time with a medical professional and the remaining 99% of diabetes time is spent on their own, at home, at work, in the community, trying to self-manage their condition, often without anyone reliable to turn to for advice and support. That comes up to about 160 hours a week, or equivalent to two full-time jobs trying to get their condition in control. And so, uh, you understand that in terms of diabetes management, Lifestyle modification is the most important thing um, out there. It's a foundation for good clinical care. And yet, I must say that we as doctors, unfortunately, we often fail at that, miserably, in fact, and I'm no exception. It's often easy for us to focus on medications rather than getting down to the root cause of the problems, which is really around our diets, 
our excess weight and our sedentary lifestyles. There are practical reasons why this happens today. Our clinics are bursting at the seams, which means that I only have about 10 minutes to spend with each patient. And during that time, I have to take a history, I have to examine him for complications, I have to review his lab test results, I have to adjust his medications, I have to explain all of this to him, I have to answer all his extended family members' questions. And not only that, I have to type everything I've said, I've thought and felt onto the clinical notes in the computer. And that's why you see doctors always furiously typing away at the keyboards and staring at the computer screens instead of looking at you. I'm not the fastest typer myself, which means that it probably leaves me just about enough time to say, Mr. Tan, remember to take more fruits and vegetables, cut down on the Hokkien Mee and the Cha Kway Tiao. Exercise is good for you, 30 minutes, five times a week. Walking, running, swimming, great single workout if you prefer. Take your medications and I'll see you again in three months' time as I usher him out of the room and prepare for the next patient. But we know that changing health behaviors is extremely difficult. If you ever tried to get your parents to go on a diet or begin an exercise program, you know exactly what I mean. My mum always gives me the worst excuses to get out of exercising. And my favorite so far has been, I just went for a massage and I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> but seriously, if you want to make real changes, you need to get personal. You need to understand each person's individual motivations and barriers to change and provide that continuous engagement and support. So in Mr. Tan's case, I have no idea what happens to him during that three months he's away from the clinic until he comes back to see me again. Einstein once said that doing the same thing again and again and expecting different results each time is a very definition of insanity. So with that, you should lock me up in the mental hospital if I expected all my patients to come back to me significantly changed after that few minutes of golden advice. So as a doctor, this really bothered me. How can we scale up good health in a way that works to the people who needed it? If you asked me that question about 10 years ago, I would say it was nearly impossible, no way. But today, I believe we have a secret weapon in our arsenal. Remember this? So, I left full-time clinical practice about two years ago to be part of a project, and today it's grown into a company. My partners and I, we brought together an amazing team of software engineers, designers, data scientists and health professionals who are all passionate about transforming the healthcare experience for people living with chronic diseases. It hasn't been an easy journey for all of us, and it's equally, if not even harder today. We had to deal with issues like patient ethics, safety, privacy, regulation, traditional mindsets. And for myself, I had to wade through skepticism from friends, family, colleagues, even within myself. Why would I give up a well-paying and progressive career as a clinician in the hospital to do something risky and perhaps even unproven like this? Especially after having spent blood, sweat and tears, literally, jumping through various hoops and clearing endless professional exams to get to where I was. It was something I struggled with for a while, but there was something within me which I can't fully explain to all of you here, but I knew it was what I had to do, my calling of sorts. So what I did was I took all of those negative thoughts, all of those uncertainties, I locked them up into a safe, and I parked it at the back of my mind. And I just focused on looking forward and seeing what needed to be done. So we went out there and we spoke with hundreds of patients with diabetes to figure out how we could use technology to improve their lives. And from that, we developed an innovative health program called Glycoleap that supports them during that 99% of time they're away from the hospital or clinic. Through a mobile app, Glyco, you can seamlessly keep track of your health habits and learn how you can develop new ones. For example, when you go for your fancy dinner date tonight, just snap a photograph of that Wagyu beef, and a qualified dietitian will provide you feedback and tell you how you can still enjoy your favorite foods while staying healthy and losing weight. Your exercise data is automatically synced using your phone's pedometer and your fitness tracker, if you have one. And when you log your blood sugar levels, you can see which foods have not been so good for you and learn how you can avoid them in the future. 
essentially we help you make sense of your health. But more importantly, we connect each and every user with a personal human health coach who's there to hold your hand and walk with you along the way. She proactively reviews your data and provides you with feedback and motivation when you most needed it. And all of that is just done on your phone. In healthcare, the human touch is very important, and yet at the same time, we recognize that as human beings, we have our limits as well. And so we are developing an artificial intelligence system that can provide that contextual, right time, right place advice to you. Through micro-learning, where you get bite-sized pieces of information which you can remember, and more importantly, take action upon in your everyday lives, rather than huge chunks of education which you forget 90% of the moment you step out of the clinic. So when you bring the focus of healthcare away from the doctor, the clinic, and the hospital, and to the patient and the community, everyone benefits. People stay healthier, people have a better quality of life, and people utilize less healthcare resources. And that's what we've seen with people who've been on our program. They've managed to improve their weights, improve their sugar control, and lead happier and healthier lives. In fact, it's their stories that keep each and every one of us in our team motivated through the struggles that we face. Take, for example, one here. She was diagnosed with diabetes about four years ago. And during that time, she never touched anything that would resemble a vegetable, and she often skipped breakfast. But when given the right support, she began to take baby steps to change her lifestyle. For example, by starting by mixing in some brown rice with the white rice to get adjusted to the taste, reducing her carbohydrate portions, taking breakfast more regularly. And what was a very big win for us was when she actually started to work some vegetables into her meals. At her last medical checkup, her HbA1c level, which is a marker of diabetes control, improved by more than three points, which surprised both her and her doctor. So what changed? She didn't have to see the doctor more often. Think about that. So what I want to leave all of you here today with is that there's a lot of great and important work that's happening in the hospitals and clinics today. Yet it's also blindingly clear to all of us that the way we've been practicing healthcare is not working well enough. And if we continue to do things in the same traditional ways we've always been doing it, our health systems will surely collapse under the additional weight of chronic disease. It's a vicious cycle of treating the never-ending sick. So let's rethink the way we deliver healthcare. Healthcare is an industry that's desperate and crying out for innovation. There are so many pain points and friction points that can be plugged with better design, technology, and some creativity. So if you are an engineer, a designer, or someone who's just passionate about improving people's lives, I encourage you to get involved in healthcare and pick problems in this space to solve. I wouldn't sugarcoat it, it could be the hardest thing you ever do, but if you manage to succeed, the sense of satisfaction at having made a real difference to people's lives is one of the best feelings you can have in this world. So, I want you to, I want you to think about how we can change healthcare from sick care to actual healthcare, which means that we focus our resources on keeping people healthy rather than treating them when they fall ill, like what's being done today. And when you fall ill, you get real personalized care that is tailored to your body, tailored to your genes, and tailored to your lifestyle. No longer do you have to wait for months for a doctor's appointment or spend hours traveling to the clinics and in the waiting rooms. That is the future that I want to live in. And I believe that all of you here can help to make that happen. With that, thank you very much.